Oh, yep, 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 yep. Oh. You see how he turned upwards? Mm -hmm. Oh, he's upwards. He's, he's gonna hit it. Oh, yeah. He's gonna hit it. Yes! Oh! Yes! Oh. Yes! Oh. Good morning. Greetings from Selkirk, Manitoba, from the Canalta Hotel. Um, we're fishing the Red River today. It's been it's been a couple years since I fished the Red. Um, this year was like a legendary, legendary fall walleye run. A lot of walleyes come from like Winnipeg into the Red River, and uh, yeah, a lot of the people I talked to said it was probably the best walleye run they'd seen in like 10 years, maybe more. Hopefully that translates into ice fishing season. Uh, we got a lot of gear to pack up and uh, we're gonna try to get out there really, really early. I gotta head home tonight, but I wanted to tack one more day onto my trip and uh, maybe catch a big Red River green back. We gotta go, but check out this new sweater I got. Pretty sweet, am I right? Festive. I've been getting lots of questions about what boots I'm wearing this year. New ones, I got the Winnipeg Ice Fishing Show. They are called Nats. They are so light. These are definitely the lightest boots I've ever worn. Apparently a lot of commercial fishermen use them. I actually got them from a Selkirk fishing store called Harvester Outdoors. And uh, they're like, you gotta, you gotta try these boots. So I'm trying them. It is so cold. Minus 23, but with wind chill, it's yeah, I think it was like supposed to be minus 35 or minus 39 with wind chill this morning. Normally I don't bundle fully up in the truck, but. Hey guys, we made it to the river. I got a lot of unpacking to do. It's gonna be kind of cold. So the next time you see me, camera might be inside of the shack. We might do a little time lapse, we'll see. But it is frigid. And uh, the biggest thing is I just wanna get set up for that morning light. Fish on. Fish are snapping. I wish I could get all my gear dialed in. On the rattle bait. Guys, we're struggling right now to get dialed, but fish are snapping. Ooh, big mark. Come on. Eat the rattle bait. Oh, it's a big fish. Got him. Got him. We are hooked up, guys. We are having some issues, but the fish are snapping. And there's, oh, that's a nice thing. Yes! Guys, right there. That fish makes the day. We're not even set up yet. I'm having some issues with GoPros, issues with my propane. But look at this fish. Look at that green. It has been a while since I've been on the Red River and, uh, Wow, this is, there's some good action going on right now. Oh, another one racing up. Yes. Wow, I need to get, I need to get my live scope fixed. We'll get another chance of that fish. Oh, he's coming back. He's coming back, got him. Wow, guys. It is 8.30, the sun has just broken the horizon, and this has been ridiculous action on the red. And here's what I love about the red. You don't need a big truck. You don't need a big snow machine. Give him a little dunk. Guys, we are having such a good start to the day. That was the flasher jig, which I'm using on my dead stick. And if I was keeping fish, that would be perfect. But I think we'll catch some more yet. There is so much action right now. I wish I would have been ready a little bit quicker. Oh, there's a fish coming up to the dead stick. Oh my goodness. Come on, come on. Oh, he kissed it. He's gonna come back, wow. These fish are so aggressive right now. It's a decent sized fish too. Got him. The Red River is on. Wow. Sorry, what I was saying, I'm not sure if I ever said my main point there. What I love about the Red River is it's so accessible. You don't need a snow machine. You don't need a truck. You don't need a lot of gas money, depending on where you're coming from. People come from all over. 
someone just asked me, they're like, are there, are there good fish on the Red River north of Lockport there? I'm like, yeah, it is world class. Like to be able to drive, park your car on the shore, walk out 50 yards and have a chance of a 30 inch walleye, that's, that's as easy as it gets. As you can see, it's not, you can definitely get numbers too. Typically, if I was wanting to send someone to catch numbers of fish, I'd send them to like Winnipeg, but the Red River is lots of saugers too, and that's something else that I like to be catching saugers. It makes me feel confident that a big walleye could be cruising through the same area. As far as depth goes, you can catch them anywhere from, it feels like 10 feet to 28 feet. I mean, it really depends on, uh, yeah, just kind of what you're seeing. I like to be catching some saugers for some activity to know there's kind of fish in the area and just marking fish. I want to be in an area where I'm seeing fish cruising through. They might be, you know, other types, they might be catfish, they might be who knows carp, what else, but I like I like seeing some fish moving through because it doesn't seem like they're all catfish. There's definitely like, you know, feels like there's walleyes mixed in and I'm always watching for suspended marks because that's often can be some of those bigger walleyes. We're here, our co-host is uh, showing up shortly. He slept in a little bit, that's all right. Yeah, it's been a good start to the day already. Ooh, there's a nice mark. Flickering on the bottom. It's coming up. Oh baby, got him. So sweet, man, these fish are fired up. This is what you wanna see. Oh, 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 oh. All right, we're getting things under control now. We got the man, the myth, the chef, the cooker, I don't know what you call him. Upside down crazy guy. Josh McFadden in McFadden. the house. <laughs> Josh came to save the day. So a couple things to keep in mind is you probably don't want to fish outside a day like this because you're going to freeze the fish. If you're keeping fish, it's okay. But today we are going to keep some fish, but we want to catch a big one to release. So fishing in a shack is such, uh, it just, it, it stops the fish from freezing, right? We're not dealing with that wind chill. So anyways, enough talking. We got three holes cut right here. We got one in the middle for a dead stick that we're going to take turns on and then we're going to have two active baits on either side and, and ideally we'll be able to see all three of them on the live scope if I can dial this in. Oh, here we go, for real. Oh. Wow, Josh oh, has the touch. Oh, lost him. Oh, he went to yours. He seemed dark to yours right away. Yeah. Wow, Josh is the ma magic touch. How much I appreciate you coming. Oh, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. This guy, get out of here. Oh. He's on it, he's on it. He's coming back, maybe I can steal him. No, don't steal him. He's on it, here we go. Oh, he just keeps what, tapping it. <laughs> I got him. I'm gonna catch him here. Oh, he did come right back for you. Oh, he's on it. I've never. Uh... You got. That is just the world's <laughs> smallest fish. Oh my gosh. Like he's grabbing it, but I am not setting the hook because he's just not doing the thing. <laughs> oh, we're gonna have a little montage of you just setting the hook. Wow. <laughs> oh, big mark, big mark. Wow. Up by your bait. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, my. Oh, he's coming for me. Bait or is he on you? Look how big that mark is. Oh, my is. gosh. Oh, my. He's coming in, baby. My drag is so tight. That was such a big fish. This is the 38 medium. This is the true grit. I think this is your go to greenback walleye rod if you're fishing in a shack. Uh, there's the 50 inch run and gun, which can be a little tighter in a shack. So, you know, those oh. two are kind of my two favorite greenback rods. And then we have the Tantrum. I actually don't know what the official name of this color is, but the gold, the black back. And the thing is this bait is so loud. So when you're fishing oh, some comes, dingier water, it helps call the fish in. So we've got the third hole between us, the dead stick, and this is the drench. And this rod, is my favorite rod in the entire frostbite lineup because it's got such a soft tip. So that fish can chew on the minnow and that rod can load up. It's still got a backbone for a big fish. And we're going a little bit heavier with, with the leaders here. I'm using, uh, I'm using 12 pound fluorocarbon leaders, uh, eight to 10 pound mainline braid. And uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna have some fun, Josh. So this is a situation where I am gonna drill a separate hole for the transducer, which I did. It's, it's right under the tripod, you can't see it. But I often get comments, hey Jay, why don't you have a separate hole for the transducer? When I'm running gun fishing, I don't wanna have to drill a second hole every time I stop because I'm looking for fish. It's not a big deal to pull the transducer out. Maybe you lose the odd fish, but in a situation like this on the Red River, we're kind of camping out and waiting for the fish. We're not looking for them quite as much. I know there's fish moving through. We've seen activity this morning. So 
we're, we're probably gonna stay on these same three holes all day. And that's why, you know, having a separate hole for the transducer is nice. And as well, transducer is a little bit downstream of our holes because the current is pulling our holes that way towards Lake Winnipeg and your bait will actually swing underneath the transducer then, so. It's pretty low right now though. That there's current. not much current at all. No. Yeah. Oh, there's one right under me right here. Oh yeah. Ooh, Joshua. Come on, Tony. Come on, Tony. I was coming for you. Oh, oh my. Oh, that looks like, that's a big fish. Look how there's big There's two that. of them, man. There's two. Oh my goodness. Oh. Where's that other one at? That was so big. You could see the tail. You could see the tail. The full body outline of that fish. Oh my gosh, there's another one. Fish is kicking around. Oh, 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 oh yeah, oh, he's, oh. that's for sure. The tiny little saw. Oh no, he's great. looking bigger now. Yeah, big little baby sawyer. Oh, oh, dust it up. Man, those go. fish just have too much stupid in them. Like, <laughs> here, he's gonna hit again. Look how he's lined up at it. Oh, this Man. is not a sauger. Tiny little sauger, folks. Not a sauger. Probably a. Josh is good luck. This is a decent fish. Oh, he Oh, that's a great one. Oh. For a oh. sauger, that's a nice that's walleye. <laughs> Just sneaking into our Guys, look at that. There's another one coming in. Josh is working some other fish on the graph, and that is a beautiful Red River Greenback on the rattle bait. Missed him once, hit him the second time. A little too big to eat, but uh, I think we're gonna have a lot of fun today. I would, I'd eat that. Oh, he just bit it. <laughs> what a beauty. It's the sweater. Oh, there's a fish chasing me. He's still there. Oh, he bumped it. It's just not marking great right now. Chasing it still. Tough to see, but he's there. Sauger. Could this be dinner, Josh? The old Sauger slammer. Oh no, he's in the hole. It's not dinner. Yes! <laughs> not dinner? <laughs> well, I mean, you did catch him with your hand. It's not a legal catch. Uh, Would you be interested? Sure. A little different. Kind of fatty. Interesting. Kind of sweet. I like them fried a little better. Kind of savory. Best quality sausage. Oh, it says cook before eating. Actually? Yeah, it actually does. Oh my goodness. Don't worry, I've eaten a bunch of them raw. <laughs> what? <laughs> Can you show? <laughs> I cannot believe that. I'm just kidding. This it is some not. sort of dollar food <coughs> Chinese sausage. And I just took a bite. And Josh is like, yeah, you're supposed to. You're definitely supposed to cook them, it says on the bag. Cook them before eating. How sick am I going to get? Well, probably not. I've eaten a bunch of them raw. But I've eaten a bunch of them cooked, too. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. What is the matter with me? Come on. Oh, okay. He's Look at these two up. on the left. Yeah, yeah, Look yeah. at this pot of fish. A couple big walleyes cruising in. Let's double up. Okay, you can see the tail kicking and then yeah, the body that's too. Yeah, unreal. Oh boy, look how fast this one's moving. Oh, sweet tan. Come on. Oh. Come on. Come on. Oh my goodness. Oh. Who's he going for? He's oh going my for the gosh. Cloud. Oh you my gosh. You got two near you right on. now. Went under it. Oh my gosh. What is happening? What? That's the school of bait. Gold eyes coming right in. What the? That might be multiple big fish. Oh my gosh. Maybe it's just one big fish. That was wild. Ooh, that fish is engaging. Oh, come on, you look cute, man. Oh, that's such a big come fish. On, give me a kiss, give me a kiss. Oh my. Give me a kiss. Oh my. What is happening? Why are they all swimming in that same spot? Well, today we are fishing in the Escape 2800. This is the biggest flip over Eskimo makes. Uh, I like it because it's got enough room for two people plus a tripod in the corner, which is, you know, a lot of shacks, it's it's tough to be able to fit the tripod to be filming the whole scene right here. Um, I like flip overs. Um, when I'm fishing by myself, it's pretty nice because I can keep everything in the sled. It's really quick to set up. And then on really cold days, it's just a lot easier to get it warm because there's not that same square footage, right? You're probably dealing with half the square footage. Wow, is there a lot of fish there's things as, as a pop-up. So, you know, if you only have a smaller heater, um, sorry, yeah. Flip overs warm up a lot faster. When I invite Josh fishing, it is implied that he is gonna cook for me. Before we get into today's recipe, Josh does a bunch of recipes on the Huntfish MB website. How many are you doing this year, 20? Oh, probably like a million. Yeah, probably a million plus 20 recipe videos uh, shot by our friend Marcel, they're super well done. I'll link them below, but uh, yeah, a lot of cool wild game 
fish foraging type recipes and uh, this is just one of them today. Do you hate shrimp? Uh, I don't love shrimp. Do you hate? Okay. I'm just kidding. This stuff. Okay. <laughs> well, our shrimp are looking good. Okay, so we've got some mushrooms. So this is just like a brown cremini mushroom. Uh, we've got them from the old Love Day Mushroom That's Factory. That's local? The old local mushroom factory. And I'm just gonna make up a bunch of skewers like so. What else? All right, here it is. This is the beer batter. So it's not, it's not a liquid batter in the bag. This is just our dry mix and you add beer to it. There are some really cool instructions on the back of the package. You can see how much beer you need to add to a specific amount of catch and cook. And uh, you can kind of eyeball that too, as long as it's a wet batter, you're in good shape. We'll dip our mushrooms and shrimp on a skewer and uh, it'll just make it easy to dip into the batter without getting, a, getting things super messy. And then we'll plop those right in the oil. Um, and they'll be easy to remove and to eat as well. So I'm just gonna make up a whack load of these and get cooking. When you put your product in, and by product I mean your fish or your meat, you want it to just come out with a good coating on it. Nothing too thick, but nothing too runny. And that's basically what you're looking for there. Unreal. Pretty close, eh? Oh boy. Oh man, yeah, that's... Oh, that's perfect. It's, pop it's really hot in here, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's perfect. First Let batch, try. First, first batch is almost done. This is actually really nice with the uh, skewers. You can let these things just drip dry. Oh yeah. Check that out. The shrimp's probably good for you to go. There we have a mushroom. Feeding time for the boys. Hmm. Okay. It gets puffy. This is more like your traditional fish and chips type style with the with the beer batter. Yeah, the old English style. This is so good compared to those raw sausages we just ate. Ah. So guys, in my years fishing the Red River, I would definitely say morning bite is kind of key. Um, I've, I've definitely, like evening bite, you can get good fish, but morning, morning is so key. That's where we had the most activity. Josh wasn't here yet. I was struggling to get set up, but uh, that doesn't mean an evening bite can't be a thing. And just, yeah, staking it out. If you think you're on a good spot, you're gonna waste time moving around. Um, and I feel like on the red, kind of camping out's the deal if you're seeing fish. On, on Lake Winnipeg, I'd be more likely to move. But the red, I have, I have no problem sitting in the same couple holes all day. We've been seeing constant fish moving. I think a lot of them are probably catfish or carp, but there are some of those fish that I, I think are big walleyes. And... Someone oh, calling me. Italy, this is gonna be good. Phone call from Italy. Oh, mucho bueno. Hello? Hello. This call is from Canada Border Services Agency. Mm -hmm. The reason behind this call is that Canada Border Services Agency has seized a parcel under your name which was shipped through Canada Post using your identity. Oh no. The parcel contained illegal components. Please press 1 and hold the line. Well that's nice music at least. Your call has been transferred to Officer Matthew White from Canada Border Service Agency. How may I assist you? Hi, I, am, I got a message that I'm in trouble for the illegal package. Okay, let me get your name so I can pull up your file. Yeah, my name is Alex, A-L-E-X, okay. Peric. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at right as I drop. Oh, Josh. Yes! Your drag is so loose! Oh my gosh, I loosened it just to be uh, safe here. It's just a little, little sauger, folks. He's being real erratic. Yes, yeah, we got the shot, both angles. Do you, oh, he ate that. I really like these hemostats for fish that are decide to take a little bit deeper. There yeah, you go. Yeah, just easy way to save a fish. <laughs> All right, guys, we are now encroaching on the prime time. It is just about three o'clock and like 4.15 is sunset. So this is the most important hour of the day. That's a, that's a nice thing, like the red is so accessible. So even if you only fish for half a day, only fish in the morning, only fish for sunset, it doesn't take long to get out. 20 second walk and you can be in fishable water. So today we're focusing on, there's a bit of a hole here that bottoms out at 30 something feet. We're on the slope in like 25 to 28. Josh, why should someone come fish the Red River? Active fish, <laughs> um, opportunity, tons of opportunity to catch a crazy amount 
of different species of, of fish, which if you're a multi-species enthusiast, that is... Uh, Sauger, walleye, pike, river lamprey, burbot, <laughs> the odd crappie, maybe a white bass, maybe a carp, maybe a catfish, maybe a sturgeon. Maybe a freshwater drum. Maybe a freshwater drum. You can stare at the graphs, the maps. You can stare at the maps for hours trying to figure out the perfect spot. Like really any of the access points are where people catch fish, like, you know, the flow plane base or end of Maine. Those are just spots. I mean, th there are factors like Netley Creek flowing in or Sugar Island, but like all, all those spots are pretty much a spots where the road comes, comes close to the ice. Super and close. that's where people can walk out. You can catch fish anywhere along here. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot going on up there. Right <laughs> yeah. Now. Like right under the ice, eh? Oh, this one's coming from. Can you catch him? Oh, yeah. I cannot feel a thing. Like, I'm expecting a whack, and there's just nothing there. Seemed like it was. You got him! Josh is hooked up. Is it a gold eye? Or is it a walleye? Are we ending it with a greenback walleye? It is small. No, it's not. It is big. It is huge. It's trophy size, whatever it is. Look at that. I told you. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Just so as we were talking about the multi-species action. Right under the ice. <laughs> that was awesome. No fish here. Yeah. Look at them. Except for that one cruising in. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Oh. You see how he turned upwards? Mm -hmm. This fish is hanging around for a while and he keeps turning back. Yep. Crazy. Oh, he's upwards. He's, he's gonna hit it. Oh, yeah. He's gonna hit it. Pull away from. Oh, yeah. He's going up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes! Oh! Yes! Oh. Yes! Oh. Josh, please turn the GoPro and plug it. He's right here. He's right here. Oh, that's a big walleye. Oh! Oh, my! Yeah. Yeah, buddy! Yes, yes! Look at that thing! Oh! Oh! I could cry. That is buddy. such a beauty. This is what has been down there all day We've messing with us. We've been seeing them. That rattle bait is beyond gone. We got these hemostats here. This is such a oh. hearty Here, I'm gonna fish. give it a little dunk. All right, guys, one more look. If I had to guess, I'd say probably around a 28-inch walleye. That is why you fish into the dark and you stick it out, we are getting that big walleye back down the hole. All right, this big baby is going back. <sighs> Guys, I didn't think we were gonna do it, but that is the Red River. That is such a typical day on the Red River. You get 10 to 20 saugers, you catch a couple eater-sized walleyes, and you have a chance of a fish like that every time you come out. We mark those big marks all day, and that one just he just turned a little bit differently. Josh is marking a big one right now. I'm just trying to be quiet. Because... Oh, Josh. Dude. Hold my hand. So good. Josh McFadden. Check him out. Social media. I'm a really good fishing assistant. Shout out to Hunt Fish Manitoba for sponsoring this video. And uh, be safe on the ice, guys. And uh, thanks.